So I'm going to be showing you how I like to write tests for components in React that use Apollo. So to demo this, we're going to be testing out this simple component right here. And it is a to-do, basically, list that you can add items to. And it is a form. And if I add a to-do and there's no to-dos, or there's no text in the box, it's going to have a required. Um, and then I can add some text, and I can add a to-do, um, and then it'll show up. So this functionality is what I want to test. And so the way I test may be a little orthogonal, but what I like to do is basically emulate what I would do if I was not actually writing a test. Uh, and what I mean by that is what I would do if I was just in the browser and wanted to emulate, like, you know, do what I just did there to verify it worked, is I like to replicate that. And I like to do kind of uh, either use a end-to-end -end test with Cypress or use an integration test with React Testing Library. And we're going to be looking at React Testing Library in this video. I like this one over uh, Enzyme. The reason why I like this library a lot is it promotes tests where you don't worry about the underlying uh, implementation. And instead, you kind of just interact with it like you were a user. So I really like that approach. Um, and so we're going to be taking a look how we can write a test for that. So we are going to be going through the getting started of React Testing Library. So we're going to start by uh, yarn adding this library right here. And I already add this to my little create react app here. So I'm not going to run that. But I have a app.test.tsx, um, which is a blank file that I'm going to add my test to. Now, uh, one thing I wanted to mention real quick too is if you want to follow along with this, I'll put the code on GitHub so you can uh, basically write this test along with me. So uh, we've added this library. I'm going to go to the example that they have. And we're going to copy the example. And I'll link this below if you want to copy this as well. And this is just getting started code for us. All right, so this is what it should look like. I'm not going to worry about installing just DOM for this or uh, these two libraries. And you'll notice I wrote the word app.test.tsx. If you're new to testing, um, this is something you'll usually do in your files. You'll usually call them .test or .spec is another one you'll see. Um, and so this makes it easy for Jest to find your file. So Jest is a test runner. Um, it's going to run your tests for you. So either .spec or .test is usually what I name them. There may be some other file names you can do. I think some people say underscore underscore test. Um, but I usually do app.test.tsx, and I give it the same name as I'm my component I'm testing. So in this case, I'm testing my app, which renders these two guys. Okay, so here I have a test, so I'm going to um, make sure I can submit a to-do. It's basically what I'm testing. Uh, we could describe this, so this is more of a, a just thing, but usually you can have a top-level thing. For example, you might call this the uh, app, or we could give this more specific name to do app. And then inside of that, you can give more specific test cases. So each one of these is a test case. So in this case, I could name this one uh, verify validation works. We could do another test, or say submit works. And then we could put our logic for the test in each one. Um, for this, I'm just going to do a single test case here. Note, you can also do it for shorthand. So if you ever see that in people's code, um, it's the same as test. All right, so we're going to just look at a single test case here. Um, and I'm going to get rid of this stuff right here. And we're just going to start with this render. All right, so I have uh, React Testing Library imports from that. Uh, notice there's this after each. It's going to clean up. This is something from uh, React Testing Library. You can get rid of this by adding something to your Jest config. So I recommend uh, looking at the docs for this, and you'll get a better idea of how you can uh, simplify that a little bit. So I'm not going to worry about that for now, though. So here I'm going to say render. Uh, and this is coming from React Testing Library. And I'm going to render an Apollo provider. Apollo mock provider. Uh, if you don't know what this is, I recommend watching the previous video to this. I'll link it below where I explain what that is. And this is basically going to mock out our Apollo requests. Uh, and just to show you what we are mocking out, if we go, let's start with a to do form. 
So we have a mutation that we're going to be mocking out where we add a to-do. Um, and you can see this is a formic form. But the cool thing about React testing library is it really doesn't matter what form library you use, the test is going to look the same. So I can change the implementation of this totally, and my test doesn't have to, which is really nice. All right, so I'm going to render my app here. Um, and basically, you render what you want to test. So in this case, I want to test my app, so I'm rendering that. So the first thing that I really like to do is just to run debug. So this is going to just print the code that's being rendered rendered to the log. So now I'm just going to run yarn test. Um, I'm using create react app, so this is going to run just underneath the hood and run my test. So what this does is it just prints the uh, HTML that's going to be rendered by the components here and just gives me an idea of where I'm starting with. Uh, right. So this is what I'm starting with. I can see my input field here. I can see the button I can submit and it's loading some data for the form or for the to do's I mean. So the first thing that I want to test is my validation works. So how it works in um, the testing library is we want to select elements. Uh, and there's several ways you can select elements. An element I want to select is this input field here. You'll notice the input field, well actually, you know what, we're not even going to worry about t adding anything to the input field now. I think we'll start with the button, that was what we wanted to add to. But you'll notice like we have a placeholder on our input and we could select this by saying uh, get, get placeholder, get by placeholder text here. And so I could say const um, to do input is equal to get by placeholder text and then we could plug in our text here which is to do dot 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 um, and so there's all kinds of different uh, things that you can get by so you can see I have all these different gets um, get all and get by you can get it by a test ID text title and so on so check those out if you want to select elements by different things so that's going to give us a reference to the input can also get a reference to the button here and a lot of times what I like to do to get a reference is to add a test ID and that's what I'm going to do in this case you can add a test ID to a component by saying this so data dash test ID and then what you want to call it so I'm going to say submit dash button and then in my actual app here and we can close that we can actually say get by test ID so I'm going to say submit button is equal to get by test ID. All right, and here I'm going to say submit button. And now I can say fire event dot click. Um, and fire event is coming from React Testing Library up here. And then we can pass the element submit button. And fire event is how you basically can interact with the different elements you have here. So it has all kinds of stuff, copy, cut, drag. We can see all the different events that we can trigger. So we're gonna do a click in this case. Um, and we can click our submit button. And again, we can debug to see what it looks like. And the point of this is I wanna be able to see my validation. So let's add debug. I could just, should just keep debug there. Um, so let's run this and see. So come over to our thing can see a uh, button add to do and you'll notice that we don't actually see um, the text or any text here if we go to our to do form it should show an error if there's uh, if the error is available if there is an error it should show it so it's not seeing an error yet and a lot of times this happens because well we just haven't waited for it to uh, load or to render so a lot of times I like to use uh, Dom change so we can run this uh, function called wait for DOM change. Um, and this is, again is coming from React Testing Library. And it's just gonna wait for the DOM to change. So after I click the submit button, I wanna wait until the element is rendered. Basically it should re-render, it should validate to see that there's something wrong and it should display an error. So now that we add this, and this was gonna return a promise, so you can just await it, made this thing async. Um, if we come down here now, we can now see our required text showing up there. And so what we can do is we can just, we don't even have to wait, we can just say get by, get by, oh, you know what I haven't got from here yet. That'll be easiest. Say get by text. Yeah, 
and we can I can grab this required div and see that it's there. And I think this throws an error if it can't find it. So for example, um, let's just see what happens here. It says unable to find an element with the text dash required dash. So perfect. So if I just add it like this, this is going to assert that it's able to find the required text. Nice. So, so far what we've done is we've hit the submit button, waited for a change to happen and verify that the required text shows up. So the next thing that I'd like to do is I would like to fill out my form. So we have access to this to do input. I'm going to say fire event dot change on our to do input. And we say target value and then uh, you'll notice this looks similar to what an event looks like and we'll pass in the actual text here that we want to update so in this case I'll say go to the store to add to my to-do so basically this is going to fill out the input um, and now if I want I can fire another to-do button to get triggered and this is going to submit my form so now what do I want to do to actually make sure my form is submitted okay well, what I did in the last one was verify that the to-do showed up. So let's do exactly that. So in this case, what I can do is I can say, um, yeah, get by text is I guess the one I want to say, get by text. And I want to get this go to the store text. In this case, there's going to be a couple DOM changes. So I'm going to use a different thing here. I'm going to say, wait for element. And this takes a function like this. And basically this says, wait for the an element to show up with the text, go to the store. Um, in this case, I, don't, I actually don't know if this will actually work. Let's see if it does. Um, see how it's it was loading for a little bit and it errored out? It says, unable to find an element with the text, go to the store. Um, and that's because I haven't mocked out my mutation yet. Um, but this gives you just an idea what wait element does. So it's going to basically wait, 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 wait until this becomes true or it's going to error out. All right, so when I click on the submit button, it's going to call a mutation. So what I want to do is I want to mock that out. So I'm going to say custom resolvers mutation. And then the name of it, add to do. And it's going to return an ID of one. And the type is going to be go to the store. So that is going to be what's returned from my mutation. And if we look at what I'm doing in the mutation is after that gets run, it updates and it updates the get to do's query. And so that's what should be causing the get text to show up. Um, and so we can see that our test has now passed. We do have this problem with two, two children with the same keys showing up. So we could go over to our to-dos um, and we can see the ID we're using and the ID looks like it is not working. So I could just use the index as a key and ignore the ID there. Maybe that'll get the test to pass. So there we go. So we have uh, tested this component and this is probably how I write the test. So this may be a little weird. I'm kind of combining two components together, um, but this is how I tend to write tests. Um, it's, it's a way where I don't have to write a ton of tests and I can test a lot of different things. Um, so there's places to use tests like this and there's places where you may wanna write smaller tests. Um, but this is the gist of it and this is the gist of React testing library. There's a lot more to it. Uh, but this is kind of how I like to use it with Apollo. So I use debug a lot, make sure I can see what the output is. And I basically select the elements I want to interact with, fire some events on them. And then I use some of these component, these special uh, React testing things like wait for DOM to change. And again, you can find these things in the docs or wait for an element. And then I make sure uh, elements I expect to show up do or uh, whatnot. And that's the gist of how I will write my tests uh, in Apollo and for my React components.